What's up everybody, That Car Guy Eddie here, and today another how-to video. Today I'm actually gonna go over how to uh, go ahead and put some bead locks on your tires and wheels. So uh, basically what I got here is I got a set of System 3 SB4s. Uh, these are bead lock wheels. They are 15 by 10. I'm actually gonna be putting sand paddles on these bad boys here and um, <clears throat> a set of the SS360s. You know, in my opinion, System 3 is probably the best bang for your buck when it comes to bead locks. Uh, I mean, I haven't seen anybody break them. They come in a lots of different widths and uh, tire sizes or wheel sizes and options like that. But um, one thing I didn't see was a lot of videos of showing people putting these things on. So I'm pretty sweaty, actually. I've got, look over here, I've actually already done a couple of them. It's pretty simple what you're gonna need for this. Um, you're gonna need a 13 millimeter socket. And if you have an impact gun, it's gonna make your life a whole lot easier. Second thing, I always tell people a little pro tip is leave the sand tires out in the sun. Um, get the rubber hot, makes things very, very pliable, a lot easier to manipulate, maneuver things around. Um, and then of course, soapy water, or in my case, I use glass cleaner. Why do I use glass cleaner? Because it evaporates super quick. Um, it's ammonia based and uh, you know, you don't have any of that stuff sloshing around your tire afterwards. Soapy water does similar things to it and it's cheaper. A lot of people that go that route. You also probably want some gloves, make your life a little bit easier. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put this down and see if I can't splice this video together to make it more entertaining for you guys, you know? I will tell you one little thing with the System 3 wheels is uh, the, the, the lug nut uh, holes are pretty small. So if you go and you try to get lug nuts for these things, you're gonna have to get some spline drive lug nuts that are much smaller like this. Dun, da, 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 acorn style. Um, I have a Can-Am, so mine are 12 by 1.5, um, but you will have to get smaller diameter lug nuts. And the reason why is because these holes are too small for your stock lug nuts. So if you go get some new wheels and you're like, hey, I got some new wheels, these are gonna be epic. They're not gonna fit on with your stock lug nuts. Um, at least that's how it is on the Can-Am. That's how it was on my KRX and We'll see what ends up happening. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and splice together some stuff here and see if we can't get this rolling. All right, so as promised, here we go. Here's the wheel. And this is the tool that I'm using right here. Absolutely amazing, makes life a lot easier. You just basically wanna take all these things off, make your life way easier with the impact. And the pro tip of the day from the legit mechanic to prevent, to prevent stripping, Always start with your, when you're putting them back in, always finger tighten a couple of threads down. My mechanic will be very excited that I told you guys that because originally when I saw these videos, people were like, don't do this with an impact, don't do it with an impact, blah, 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 blah. And while you don't have to do it with an impact, um, it will make your life easier. So the way that it works is that, so this is your tire here. And on the inside here, this is what they refer to as the bead. It's basically a vertical piece of uh, rubber, effectively. And on a normal wheel, you have this little hump right here. And what happens is, is that the rubber pushes up over it and eventually the rubber sits between here. Now, that's not a problem. And if you've ever tried to de-bead a tire, uh, tires do not come de-beaded very easily. However, at extremely low tire pressure, and at extreme angle and tire flex and things like that, your tire, if it pops a bead, goes this way, and then you actually get a rapid, uh, rapid deceleration of air, uh, rapid deceleration of air, is that even a word? Rapid deflate is the word I'm looking for. The way that the bead lock works is that this piece of rubber right here actually sits down in this channel, and the bead lock, actually locks it to the wheel. See that little gap in there? And basically what it does is this squeezes it on. Now the, the inherent advantage to bead locks is that even if your tire goes flat, you're gonna be able to get home because your tire's not gonna come off the wheel. It might come off that back bead, but this front one's gonna be gripping on it so hard it's not gonna come off because it's literally locked to the wheel. So, like I said, that is the bonus of bead locks. Um, you could run extremely low air pressure. To be honest with you, all side-by-side -side should come with bead locks if you're 
vehicle doesn't come with bead locks, I'm sorry. Definitely look at getting these. I think the wheels were like 135 a piece or something. I got them off off eBay, so. This is what the factory wheels look like. Same thing with the bead lock. So the, they work the same. Um, I wanted to get these because I needed to go to 15s anyways. If you have a Can-Am, you know exactly what the problem is. Uh, the wheels are too small. And what ends up happening is that basically rocks get kicked into here and then a rock gets stuck between this and it punches holes in the wheels uh, because the wheels are only 14s. Now, the bonus to only having 14 inch wheels is that it's a lot lighter. And when you're talking about speed, you definitely want lighter wheels. But um, I think it's a design flaw in the Can-Am, you know? What ends up happening is that you kick rocks up and rocks bounce along the car. Bounce, 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 bounce. They hit your trailing arm. And then if you look, there's a huge scoop right here. It's like a, look, and it goes right in and drops it in your wheels. And if you look, you can actually see, see my, my wheel has some scrapes on it down there. That's from the rocks getting in there. So that's why you want to put 15s on your Can-Am. Uh, if you're watching this and you're a KRX guy, uh, your mud scrapers can get rocks stuck in there. So be careful with your mud scrapers. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and get this on here and, uh, show you guys step by step on how I go through it. All right. So once you have the tire here, you want to wet it. Like I said, I just spray some around the bead and what this does is this allows it to maneuver a little easier here. And then you always put the bead lock side in first. So make sure you have the rotation going the right way on the wheels. I just did the right side of the car. Now I'm actually doing the driver's side of the car, or the left side of the car. Um, and you always put the bead lock in first because this side of the wheel is smaller than this side of the wheel. So let's see if I can do this one handed. And hook this bad boy in here. And you, hey, I did it one handed. Hey, like for the one handed tire mounting. Like and subscribe. All right. No, seriously, I should get some likes for that. Seriously, it's, I did not think it was going to be that easy. All right. So now what you do is you don't really need to focus too much on this side of the wheel because we're going to put the bead lock on first. The way that you set the bead is with air pressure. Why you need an air gun. Um, so we're going to see if we can do this here while on camera. So you can see the wheel came through this side. And it's a wheel, not a rim. Okay a wheel oh god why is this so heavy oh god okay okay so now that we have it down you want to get it centered because you guys can see you see the channel where it needs to ride and see how it's not 100 percent centered in there so you can always get this around here and you can always lube it up too if you want but if you just push you can actually see It goes right down in there relatively easily. Man, if I could do this one-handed, guys. All right. So now that it's flush, uh, we want to do this side of the tire first, like I said, because basically once it's locked on, it's locked on. It's not going to come off whatsoever. So now you take your bead lock and these are directional guys. You see this, how it's smooth on that side. If you look on this side, it's got that little lip directional so you line these holes up and you're gonna see it's got a nice good seal around here and once again back to the mechanic pro tip of the day finger tighten in all of these so I'm gonna go ahead and go around and do that now I don't want to make you guys watch this so let's go ahead and cut again see if we can make this video a little shorter hey hey and we're back all right, so now that we have all of these things basically put on two or three times, we're gonna go ahead and go around with your impact. Um, this makes like a life, I said, a lot easier. If you've ever put on tires or anything like that, you wanna go across to distribute the weight load. So we're gonna go ahead and just gun them down. One-handed fail here. Let me set you guys down for a second. Almost done.
Now, I know that we just used an impact and all of these should be tight, but for safety, definitely go around and torque these things to correct torque spec um, that they need to be down. Like this one, I think, is up a little bit. You can almost kind of see it here. Maybe not. I don't know. All right. Okay, so now that you have the front done, now the wheel is locked to this particular tire, and we also have it going the correct direction, okay? Always, always mind your direction here, because this is going to go on the driver side of the car. When you guys are mounting wheels, always refer to it as driver passenger. Just makes it easier, because if you look at the machine, you're like, left side or right side? What side is it? Is this the... Left side or the right side? Well, it all depends on your orientation. So now we pick this wheel up here. Now what we need to do is we need to get enough of a seal here between the bead and the wheel so that air doesn't leak out and we can get this bead over. So how do we do that? Well, we're gonna push on this a little bit. We're gonna try to get the wheel as close to the tire as possible and then lube it up. Like I said, this stuff dries pretty good. So you don't have to worry about using too much of it. It's not gonna affect anything here. All right. Now it's time to set the bead. Now, how am I gonna do this one-handed? I did not think of that, so. See, I accidentally even canceled the recording. All right, so we're gonna have to do some creative editing to get this out. So now we are going to take our air gun here. And you wanna make sure that you have a good air compressor when you do this, guys, because um, you're gonna need a lot of air going into this here. Uh, so we're gonna turn it on, and it's not gonna really read anything off the bat, but I wanna see if we can have it pop the bead here. So we're gonna go ahead and just hammer this down. Now, when you do this, um, it's gonna be loud and it's gonna make a loud pop, but that's a normal thing. So um, here we go. All right, so did you hear that kind of high-pitched noise? The air is actually leaking from somewhere on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the camera down, give this a good push to make sure it gets in here better. All right, so with two hands, I was able to at least get the tire up to the bead uh, bump on the wheel here. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and try it again. Here we go. Okay, so we're not getting any, any, any pressure in here, any air, so I'm gonna need two hands. Um, I'm gonna push on the wheel and give it air at the same time to try to seal it up. Once once the tire start gets some air in it, it's gonna push and you're not gonna have to hold it, but give me just one second. Let me, let me go and do this for you guys. See, and you can hear it instantly. There's like no whistling. Okay. So um, I just pushed on it a little bit and uh, pushed on the wheel and we're gonna go ahead and hammer it down here and see if we can get the bead to pop. Now, after you hear it pop, you're gonna wanna give it a nice little visual inspection just to make sure the bead is sat all the way around. We're good. We're gonna go over, and the tire's got 15 pounds of air in it, um, which is actually right at its limit for the sand tires. Most of the time when you, when you mount, This is not good. Okay, so I'm glad I actually got this on film. So my my valve is bad. I do not have a I don't have a stem in my valve. Okay. I'm actually glad that you guys can see this. So you see how air is just coming out of this thing? There's no stem in the valve, which uh it sucks. Um good job system three. Uh That super sucks. So now what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to take that valve off, put a new valve on. Uh, 
not entirely difficult to do. In fact, we could pull it. Not entirely difficult to do, and it's not impossible, of course, by any means, but um, it is something that now we have to deal with. So, yet another problem. Anyways, besides that, that's how you go ahead and set the bead. The bead is now set on this thing right here. I really hope I don't have to take the tire off to change that. I'm going to wait till my actual mechanic gets back who has some tire stuff. He knows what he's doing more with that because to break this bead is not hard to get this tire off, but to break this bead, you need a machine to do it. So that is the video. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate all the splicing and everything put back together. Give me a thumbs up and definitely like and subscribe. You guys ride hard and have a great time.